Hi, I'm Mary Carroll. I taught English for 14 years, and I earned the Distinguished Thesis Award from Northwestern University for my master's thesis. I've designed this coursework to help you write your college papers. I will teach you how to get your words actually onto the page, how to write intelligent sentences, and how to develop logical arguments. Subscribe by clicking on the little yellow box in the corner. I post every single Monday. And hey, if one of my videos helps you, give me a thumbs up. Let's get started. Today, we'll be answering the question, where do I put my commas? It is the most common question that I would get from students. Everyone seems to be worried about it. And for good reason, I suppose. There really are a lot of places where you can use commas, and there are a lot of discretionary uses as well. So I've got a couple of real easy examples that we can go through quickly. A few others require a little bit of explanation. But I want you to stay till the very end because I'm going to give you some advanced notes on how to distinguish between certain types of adjectives. All right, let's get started. All right, the very first and the easiest ones are that we use commas in letters, addresses, and dates, all right? The very first one is you place it after the greeting in an informal letter or note, such as, Dear Jess, Hey, Sarah, all right? Easy enough, we don't need to talk about that. The second one separates parts of an address and parts in a date. And the only time you use a comma to separate the parts of an address is when you're writing the address in running text. Uh, it doesn't happen that often, but there are instances where it comes up in some kind of paper. You might say, for a while, he lived at 10 Downing Street, comma, London, and so on. All right, so let's take a look at those. 213 Main Street, comma, any town, comma, state, as opposed to using them on separate lines on an envelope such as 213 Main Street, any town, state, and the zip code. Notice that between the state and the zip code, there is no comma. We usually just separate it by two spaces, all right? And the other one is to separate the date from the year, so December 5th, comma, 2020. Good enough? We don't need to discuss those, right? All right, let's go on to a little more complicated ones. To separate a direct quote from its tag. Now, a tag is just another word for the explanatory words, like said Mary, um, explained Tom, and so on. Let's take a look at a few examples. Only two people liked it, comma, Mahima reported. All right? And of course, you've got the uh, quotation marks here, too. I'm not going to talk about those. I'm just talking about the placement of the comma. If we go on Monday... Comma, Sam said, comma, it won't be crowded. All right? Or if the tag is at the front, Jose thought, comma, the poster should be bigger. Next use, it separates coordinated main clauses. Now, I do find that students have a little trouble with this, so I'm going to talk about this a bit. Let's look at the first example. Betsy bit the bullet and Katie helped her out. Notice we've got a comma before the conjunction, okay? Now, what makes these coordinated main clauses? What makes them coordinated is that they each have a subject and they each have a verb. In the first clause, Betsy is the subject, bit is the verb. In the second clause, you have Katie as the subject and helped as the verb. That makes them coordinated or balanced because there's a subject and verb on one side and a subject and verb on the second side. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. George went to get the book, comma, but the library was closed. All right, here you've got George went, subject and verb, library was closed, subject and verb. In that case, you need a comma before the conjunction, but. All right, next example. Maria will wear a yellow dress, comma, so her mom ordered a cake with yellow flowers. I think we're getting the point now. Can you see it? Maria will wear, that's the subject and the verb, so mom ordered, subject and verb. Since there's a subject and ver verb in both clauses on both sides of the sentence, it's coordinated and therefore you use the comma before the conjunction. 
And last example. We had plenty of rain, comma, yet the irises didn't bloom this year. All right? Same thing. We had rain or had plenty. Well, just had. We had rain, yet the irises didn't bloom. All right? Subject verb, subject verb. And you've got your conjunction yet with a comma before the conjunction. All right? Okay. Another um, instance is times when we need it to separate the extra elements in any sentence from the main clause. Now, these extra elements can either be in the middle of the sentence or they can be at the beginning of the sentence. I haven't given you an example of extra elements that are at the end of a sentence, but they can also be there as well. Let's take a look at the first one. When it separates introductory text from the main clause, okay? So, after practicing every day, comma, Jerry finally hit the ball. Now, I want to point something out. After practicing every day, it does not have a subject, and that's why these aren't coordinate clauses, like the previous example. So, after practicing every day cannot stand on its own. The main clause is, Jerry finally hit the ball. Obviously, Jerry finally hit the ball makes sense. It can stand on its own. Another example, as she came around the corner, Mrs. Blake saw the cyclists racing along Main Street. Why is this just an introductory clause? Why is this not a complete sentence? Because it has, she came. There's a subject and a verb. That's true. But it has the word as. As she came around the corner, which suggests, obviously, that something else is coming, and it prevents this little group of words from being able to stand on their own. So they become an introductory element to the main clause, which is, Mrs. Blake saw the cyclists racing along Main Street. While walking to the library, Elise slipped on a patch of black ice. All right, we have a verb here, walking, but there is no subject. The word while works like the word as to create a dependent clause here. In other words, while walking to the library doesn't make sense on its own. If you walk up to somebody on the quad and said, hey, while walking to the library, they would not know what you meant, right? So the main part of the sentence is right here. Elise slipped on a patch of black ice. That can stand on its own. This becomes the little introductory element to the sentence, and it needs a comma after it. Okay? So just as we have introductory elements here to the main clause, you can have parenthetical phrases within sentences. Sometimes they're at the beginning, sometimes they can be at the end, but I've got some examples here for you of parenthetical elements or a positive phrases in the middle of sentences. Let's look at the first one. Owen who is bald, complained of the cold. Now, what makes this parenthetical? Well, the fact is, the sentence doesn't need it in order to make sense. You could read, Owen complained of the cold. It makes perfect sense without this little phrase here in the middle. Okay? But we put it in because obviously it does add some meaning. Uh, we know why he's complaining of the cold, because he's bald. Guy needs a hat. Okay? All right, but nevertheless, the sentence can stand without it, and therefore, it's called parenthetical or a positive, meaning the sentence doesn't need it, and therefore, it needs commas. All right, let's look at the next example. Blake arrived just in time for dessert. That stands on its own, does not need this extra little a positive phrase in the middle of it, but since it's there, and it interrupts the flow of the sentence. We set it off with commas. So, Blake arrived, comma, muddy and wet, comma, just in time for dessert. Roberto finished the puzzle, a comma, a large 2,000-piece landscape, comma, in record time. You set this off with commas because the sentence doesn't need it. So, let's read it without that a positive phrase. Roberto finished the puzzle in record time. Makes sense, right? 
but a little extra information is helpful. Okay, let's move on. One more example here. The little ballerinas in fresh pink tutus charmingly formed a ragged line across the front of the stage. The next example is when we will use a comma to separate items in a series, especially between the last two items. When the last two items are separated by an and, you still need a comma before the and. Now, this rule has caused a lot of arguing uh, among grammar aficionados, English teachers, and journalists, and so on. But I do fall in the camp of saying you need the comma before the final element in the series. Mom invited the Jones, the Smiths, the Arnolds, and the Millers. Commas between each one, even before that final and. Some people will argue that the and is enough of a pause. I stand with the group that says, uh, no, it isn't. And in fact, the and can be read confusingly to mean that these two items at the end go together. And therefore, if you put the comma, you will never have that miscue in reading. All right, so let's see another example. The potluck guests shared lemon bars, truffles, brownies, and custard. Now notice if we didn't have that comma before the and, brownies and custard might be thought of as the same dessert. Maybe brownies served on top of custard, are brownies on the same plate with the custard? But no, we want to make it clear that the brownies are one dessert and the custard is another one. So we've got commas between each one, including before the and or the final element in the series. Okay, another example. Despite the late hour, comma, instead of going home, comma, and with a limping car, comma, Mauricio drove his friend all the way to his home in the next county. Now, this is actually a series of introductory phrases. Uh, anything like that, and yes, you're going to put a, period, a comma in between. All right, next rule. A comma is used to separate adjectives that might otherwise be separated by the word and. Now, this is a little mental test that you're going to give yourself. If you have a series of adjectives, read the sentence aloud. Put the word and in between each adjective. If it sounds funny, then you don't need a comma. If it sounds readable, then you need a comma in place of the and. So let's take a look at this. Angela is a cautious, reserved child. Now, would it make sense to take the comma out and put an and? Angela is a cautious and reserved child. You see how that works? Yeah, we could use an and there, but we're not going to. We're going to put a comma instead. All right, let's look at another example. The violinists presented a sharp, brilliant counterpoint to the oboes. Let's do our test. The violinists presented a sharp and brilliant counterpoint to the oboes. Makes sense, sounds okay actually to use the and, but instead of the and, we're gonna put a comma in. All right, let's look at the last example. A large field of supple, willowy daffodils waved in the breeze. Okay, let's do our test. A large field of supple and willowy daffodils waved in the breeze. Sounds okay, but we're gonna use a comma instead. Our last example is that separates a verbless phrase that introduces a sentence. This is very similar to number five above. And I almost left this one out, but it is a feature of formal writing, which you might do. You might read in some of your college uh, reading materials, and you might find that you actually are doing it yourself. So it's worth a little bit of time. The funeral service over, the congregation filed out silently. Now notice this phrase has no verb, and yes, it's used as an introductory phrase to the main clause of the sentence. But you might do something like this, and it would take a comma before the main part of the sentence. Another example, fellow administrators, the group must unite to resolve the application issue. The point of this is that 
because they are fellow administrators, the group must solve the application issue. This is, one might say it's an elliptical phrase. What that means is you've left out some words. If you were to say this with all the implied words in there, it would be, since they are fellow administrators, the group must unite, blah, blah. But we write it elliptically, that is, we cut out some of the words. Even though it's a short introductory phrase, you need the comma. All right, last example. In reserve, the canned peaches will be used for next month's graduation celebrations. This, again, we can think of in terms of there are missing words. Because they're being reserved, the canned peaches will be used for next month's graduation celebrations. All right, next up, I've got some advanced notes to help you tell the difference between different kinds of adjectives. A little bit of advanced information for you that I think will give you an extra layer of confidence in your writing. We have already talked about coordinate adjectives, so I'll give you a real quick review of those. But what I want to contrast it with is serial adjectives. Let's get going. Okay, coordinate adjective, adjectives that say about the same thing. You can add the word and in between, but instead of the and, you use a comma. A couple of quick examples. Mr. Nelson's cranky, disagreeable old man. Wally is a goofy, quirky character. Honey is a natural substance with a thick, sticky consistency. Cashmere is a soft, supple yarn used for making sweaters. He polished his shoes to a lustrous, dark shine. Notice that each of these pairs of adjectives are saying about the same thing, and therefore you could put an and in between them. Let's see the difference between that and a serial adjective. Serial adjectives are used together so that when they're combined, they actually create a distinct meaning. Whereas if you use them separately, you would actually change the meaning of the sentence. Let's take a look at some examples. She wore a bright green dress to the reception. I'm not going to read these. I'll just bring them up quickly. Now, notice these pairs of adjectives mean something different if you were to take one of them out. But combined, they actually create a new meaning. So a bright green dress is different from just a green dress, correct? Uh, a golden yellow substance uh, is yellow sub substance means something different from a golden substance or gold and golden yellow together means something different. Barely translucent is different from just saying it's translucent. Wool can be irritatingly itchy. It can be itchy, but it's really irritating. Endless dopamine is very different from an, a dopamine rush. So no commas in serial adjectives. Let's do a contrast between a coordinate adjective and a serial adjective side by side. Mom made a stew of soft, mushy vegetables with stringy, chewy meat. And a serial adjective, Mom's stew had delicious deep brown gravy and bright orange carrots. That's the difference. Our next lesson will be the correct use of the semicolon compared to the correct use of the colon. See you next time. If you'd like an infographic of this comma work, as a great reminder, go to surviveenglish101.ck.page. Sign up and get your free infographics.